even at this low, low, low power, we can recognize this instantly as lung, normal lung up in the northwest. And we can see nice thin septae. We can see nice alveoli filled with air. And then we could see a pleural surface here. Well, this pleural surface appears to end abruptly at the pleural surface of another lobe of lung, and this would be almost certainly a major fissure. Notice that this lobe in the northwest is totally normal, perhaps a little hyperemic, if you'd like to emphasize the fact that some of these blood vessels look a little more prominent than they should be. But in the uh, southeast here, we have more than just prominence of blood vessels in the lung. Uh, we see that the alveoli are entirely filled with inflammatory cells, fluid, uh, probably uh, fibrin and junk, just like they are normally with pneumonias. We could uh, culture this. We could maybe uh, look at it more closely to see if we could find weird organisms. But I want to tell you that this is the absolute classical picture of a lobar pneumonia. Now, lobar pneumonia as compared to bronchopneumonia. In a lobar pneumonia, a whole lobe of lung might be involved, and it would be possibly abruptly uh, transitioned from a, a normal lobe. With bronchopneumonia, the whole lobe can often be uh, diffusely involved as well. But in the early stages, the pneumonia starts around bronchi, and if uh, bronchi is more likely to, bronchopneumonia is more likely to involve multiple lobes because the start or the focus of the infection is in the bronchi rather than just in the bronchi of one lobe. Notice these are chiefly neutrophils. Notice there's uh, perhaps a little bit of fibrin along here and along here. But for the most part, they're chiefly cells. This is an early bronchopneumonia. Notice that the septae appear to be fairly intact. They're not destroyed, but they are congested. And this is a classical lobar pneumonia. The lobar pneumonias are caused classically by uh, pneumococcus, uh, now perhaps better classified in the strep family. But a pneumococcus pneumonia is the classical cause of lobar pneumonias. Many other bacteria and conditions can do it. But when you hear the word lobar pneumonia, you can almost believe uh, you're dealing with a pneumococcal pneumonia, a very common and classic uh, kind of pneumonia. There's nothing more to show on this, so I won't. But uh, just keep in mind here that these alveolar walls are thin and they're filled with pus within the alveola. If there was nothing in the alveolae, but the alveolar walls were filled with cells, this would be a interstitial pneumonia as compared to a, uh, a lobar type of pneumonia, which we have here. Thank you very much.